Bikes are popular in many cities around the world, and they are promoted by citizens, companies and city governments. In this video, we will look at how cities and their citizens deal with cycling and city bikes from a political perspective. Do you think cycling is a relevant topic for policy and debate? In many cities around the world, citizens are engaged in protests or action groups to defend space for bikes. In dense urban areas, cars threaten the safety of cyclists. Their emissions also make cycling as a practice less pleasant and healthy. Cars and bikes have a difficult relationship and an urban mobility system needs to be well organized to align their diverging interests and claims. In most cities, the car still dominates the mobility systems. This means that the political and geographical space for bikes and cyclists is too restricted from their point of view. Cyclists have become active in campaigning for more space for bikes. I'll mention some examples. First, there are parades or marches of cyclists to reclaim streets from cars and to agendize the safety of cyclists. A famous example is Critical Mass, which was first organized in 1992 in San Francisco and since then has spread to hundreds of cities around the world. Second, in Latin America, there are the so-called ciclovias. They are monthly events where the major streets of the city are blocked for cars and opened up to cyclists, runners and walkers. People can then enjoy urban spaces that are freed from cars. Where critical mass parades have a relatively activist setup, ciclovias became adopted and supported by many public authorities. The third example is that of a Ciclopaseo project in Quito, Ecuador. This project started in 2003 as an attempt by students to scale up the critical mass event that they had attended. The students invited local inhabitants to join a monthly bike ride around the city. In six months time, the bike ride grew from 3,000 to 25,000 participants and became supported by the city authorities. Nowadays, the bike ride has become a weekly Sunday activity with around 50,000 attendants. By organizing or showing up at a pro-cycling event, citizens are actively involved in co-creating political pressure to make room for bicycles in their city's mobility system. As you see from these examples, the efforts can be powerful and successful. Bike activism has a history that goes back to the 70s. At the time, the space for bikes was under the threat of fast-growing numbers of cars. Today, the position of bikes in cities is gaining power. What we see happening in many cities today could be interpreted as the signs of a, a reverse mobility transition, from bike dominance to car dominance, back to bike dominance again. These three pictures from Beijing in 1984, 2007 and today illustrate this. Today bikes are popular among citizens who want to create a more sustainable lifestyle, but they are equally popular among cities. Cities are eager to show how good they are doing in terms of the number of bikes in their cities and in creating space for them. Copenhagen, for example, declared itself a city of cyclists and aims to become the world's best city for cycling. In Amsterdam, the city council argues that riding a bike is an essential Amsterdam experience. Paris, Berlin, Barcelona, Copenhagen and Amsterdam all nourish their bike culture and cities in Asia and Latin America show eagerness for joining this club of bike cities. It is a major selling point to tourists and fosters their sustainability image on a global level. A special bike index was created in 2011. This yearly index ranks cities on topics like bike friendliness and bike use. As you can see, bicycles are a topic of city branding. To be a cycling city is a positive thing for both city governments as well as citizens and tourists visiting the city. Some of the things that cities do in order to make space for bicycle 
uh, is to develop new infrastructure and low emission zones that ban cars from their city centers. In many cases, more room for bikes implies less space for cars. At the heart of the mobility transition is the issue of space being a, sparse, a scarce resource in inner cities. How much of the sparsely available urban public space do we allot for slow infrastructures? Biking is, of course, a form of zero emission mobility, but bicycles do put stress on urban spaces. You see this, for example, in Shanghai, in Beijing, or Amsterdam, where the excessive amount of bikes take up a significant part of public space. Bikes are good for sustainability, but can pollute urban spaces when left to private parties and not regulated. With this analysis in mind, do you agree that city bikes are a challenging subject for city politics? 